are and meant to attend the questions that follow. Section three, usually is two people speaking, but not in an informal setting, more of like an academic setting, conversation between two people, academic session. Then the fourth section, more like a monologue, but still an academic setting. So these are the four sections. So speaking of when possible question types, there are six question types in IELT listening. Six possible type of questions in IELT listening. So we'll be tackling this. And I'll just list them. There's the table completion, note completion, or form completion. That's the first type of uh, possible question in IELT listening. The second type is multiple choice. Multiple choice, very easy. Multiple choice. And the third one is short answer. Short answer. Then the fourth one is matching. The fifth is sentence completion. Then the sixth is plan, map, diagram, labeling. So it's not compulsory that you see these six different type of questions on exam day. But just to know, these are the possible kind of questions you see on exam day. So during the course of this class, I'll be sharing my screen from time to time. Yeah, if it's not uh, disrupt the class so much, I'll share my I'll be sharing some material, some pictures just to guide us as we're going along. If I can, I could also share it on the WhatsApp group as well. If I'm not too constrained to do that, then just okay for IELTS listening. Let's say by way of advice, okay. For IELTS, when it comes to IELTS listening, I will repeat it. IELTS listening is the easiest module in IELTS. But what you can do for yourself is to practice. Yeah, practice consistency. That's all you need. Practice, 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 and you are there already. So, I had listening. It's not like the other modules where we start to look for skills, where we learn skills to tackle the, the module. For, I'll say for speaking, for example, the speaking module, you can learn tested and tried skills to attempt questions, and it works all the time. For IELTS writing, of course, you have to learn writing skills. You have to learn writing skills to tackle questions. But like you can reason it out. IELTS listening, this is listening. You do not necessarily need some special skills to input. What you need, for, you need speed, of course. Yeah. What well, I think you need is concentration. On exam day, on the, on the test day, they will usually give you an. Uh, a form of headset. So that will help you to concentrate. It will block out all the noise. It's just you and what you're listening to and shading. So I would say if, when you're practicing for the IS listening, you should try as much as possible to put yourself in that exam condition. The IS listening is unique compared to the others. Yes, the IS listening, you have to, you need quiet. You need, so I'll say get, put yourself in the exam condition. To do this, you get a, a form of headset, any form of headset connected to your phone, your laptop, or whatever device you're using, using to listen to the recordings. Then you attempt it. That's it. So I listening needs all your concentration, it needs speed, but at the same time, it needs accuracy. Then it needs concentration. You can you can practice with that by using um Headphone, head earpiece, headphone, headset. Instead of just playing recordings from your phone, getting surrounding background noise confusing you. So that's it. So practice consistency. But each time you want to practice, put yourself in an exam condition. Look for quiet so you can achieve that concentration that you need. Then keep practicing, then you get it right. So without further ado, like I said, you don't need so much skills in IELTS listening. What you need is practice. There are lots of practice materials out there. What I would call like the Bible of IELTS preparation is the Cambridge series. A lot of us know about the Cambridge series, but some of us don't know about it. Yes. I don't imagine that someone would attempt the IELTS questions, the IELTS test, the IELTS exam, without practicing with Cambridge series. 
and um, maybe some people do it, but I don't think that's a smart thing to do. So some I, I imagine a lot of us would have come across the IH series. If you're in for the first time, uh, look for the resource online, look for ways to download it. There are a lot of series from series one to 10, 15, 16, and I'm aware the latest series is um, 17. Uh, I know it came out this year, that's the latest series. So the, the, Cambridge, the Cambridge series, is a, is a very solid material to use to practice for your IELTS. So yeah, IELTS listening is practice, no need for special skills. But I'll just give us some tips along as we go, some tips to guide us. Then we'll pick up a particular test tonight, we'll tackle it, then we'll see where we can go from there. So like I said, I'll be sharing my screen. Right, I'll be sharing some pictures, permit me. Uh huh. So this is just some of the things I've been saying. The basics of IELTS listening. Thirty minutes, forty questions, four sections, and six question types. Six possible question types. That's the IELTS for you, right? So I'll just share my screen some more just to guide us. So now this is what the um, section one usually looks like. Two people speaking and in an everyday social context. In other words, informal context. That's section one for you. I'll go on to show us what section two looks like. Now, this is the section two. The section two is not a conversation like section one. Section two is more like a monologue. One person speaking, describing something in an everyday, informal, social context. That is section two for you. Then this is the section three. Section three is more of an academic setting, an educational context. It says, two to three people having a conversation in an educational context. Usually the third section of the IET listening test is what you will be expecting. Then for the fourth section, from I said it earlier, but I'll just show you to so get picture of representation. So this is the section four. Is a monologue. One you hear one person speaking, but usually in an academic topic, a more educational context. So that's that. So for some tips for attempting the IELTS listening test, the word called synonyms. Synonyms. Again, for the whole of IELTS test, the four modules it cuts across the four modules. When you want, if you are ready to attempt IELTS test or IELTS exam, you must be familiar with synonyms. What are synonyms? Synonyms are words that we can replace, can use interchangeably for each other. It's not all the time that it happens to be just one word. Sometimes it comes as phrases. To give you a word, to give you a phrase, you should be able to comfortably replace that phrase with something else. For IELTS listening, the question you are seeing on your question paper, compared to what you are hearing, it might not go word for word. Of course, it will not go word for word. 
some of the time they try to twist this thing and they will use synonyms. This synonym can just come from like word to word replacement. Sometimes a little bit more technical, it comes as phrases that are synonyms. You're able to pick synonyms. What's an example of a synonym? For example, they are saying children, the children. A synonym will be kids. That's a very simplified way of putting synonyms. So that's what synonym. And that tip is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing. When we are listening to Wyatt um, um, and on, on the um, on exam day, the IELTS listening module, paraphrasing. The question you are reading, like I said, is just similarly to uh, uh, to synonyms. You won't see the idea that you're trying to pass word for word, but to be paraphrased. I can give another example. You can be saying something like, the restaurant is a very nice uh, setting. It's a very nice family setting. They can paraphrase it and put it some, some, some very, very different way. I say something like, the um, restaurant has a only view or something like that. So that's paraphrasing. It comes, it comes a lot. So for this IELT listening, which when you practice, you're able to pick out all these synonyms, paraphrasing, and all that. Another useful tip to give for IELT listening is to avoid distractors. And what are distractors? Distractor. There are like four types of distractors. So I'll just share my screen to see. What sort of distractors we mean when we say distractors in IELTS? So these are four possible distractors we can see in IELTS listening. The first one, it comes a lot. The first one is similar sounding words. Similar sounding words. So you are listening to the tape playing. You hear something, but the question, what you, what you meant to, what you are meant to answer, is not what you think you are hearing. It happens. So you will have to be careful about words that sound similar. That's a major distractor we can encounter in IELTS listening. Another one is words already mentioned. Words already mentioned. You might be describing something. When you hear the word, you might feel that's my answer, but don't jump to conclusion. Hear them keep going. You might see that that what you thought was the answer was not the answer. Is in practice you can actually see these things play out. Another distractor is synonyms. Yes, you can see the synonyms as distractors. The other one is negatives, not. Okay, how I can put this an example of this is. Saying something like, um, Mr. Smith is not the father of Jude. You might just assume you heard Mr. Smith, you heard Jude, you heard father. You can just assume that ah, they mean Mr. Smith is the father of Jude. Somehow you might not just pick the word not. So that's negatives, not. So when they use the word not, sometimes our, our brain can just be tricked to not pick that not. So since we are in it in an exam condition, we're trying to be fast. When you just hear Mr. Smith, you, hear, you, you just go ahead to um, assume that what they are saying is Mr. Smith is the father of Jude and not picking the not. Sometimes it might not be so straightforward as the word not. It can be more technical. We'll see how this one will practice um, a particular listening test. So that's it. So like I said, IELTS listening is the easiest part. It's the easiest module of the whole IELTS test. Now there are two types of IELTS generally. There's the IELTS academic and the, there's the IELTS general. Depending on our purpose of migration. Typically, if you are going for work, 
you are going for masters if you are going to country like um, the uk usually tend to go for IELTS academic and but i will not assume to say everyone on this group is attempting IELTS academic there's also the IELTS general but the good news is that whether you are doing IELTS general or whether you are general training gt or whether you are attempting the IELTS academic the listening module remains the same yes the writing module is slightly different the reading module is slightly different but the listening and speaking are the same. So that's the good news. So you don't have to worry your mind about that one. Whether you're going for general, whether you're going for academic, the listening module is the same thing you are answering. So that's that. So like we've said already, the, the pass mark, so to speak, the band score, which we take as pass mark, most of the time is seven. And what do you have to do? to attain that pass mark of seven, band score of seven. There are 40 questions. Usually you have to get correctly at least 30 over 40 to get a pass mark of seven. So for why at least me, that is something that is very, very achievable. Like I said earlier, and I continue to say, I at least is the, is the module where you can get your most mark. People get nine i've seen it a lot who get 8.5 in my time i got 8.0 and it wasn't too high but the IELTS listening to get a pass mark of seven you need just 30 over 40 it's very doable to get to get a pass mark of 8.0 to get 8.0 band score of 8.0 you need to score 35 over 40 but in all you should not go below 30 to get a seven, you should not go below. You can get 30 something, 35. Do not go below 30 over 40. And this is very doable, like, uh, like I've said. So we've talked about the way the exam is structured, the different section one, two, three, and four, the six possible questions. So at this point, we'll just um, move further. All right. So on that tip, I can just chip in at these points is that you listening for corrections. Yes, you listening for corrections. You will get this when you practice a lot. So for example, there'll be a phrase in the recording. There'll be a phrase, something like, um, a question can come like this. What, um, which hotel was chosen by a speaker? an example like that just a question which hotel was chosen there will be a list of hotels different different names Hilton, um cottage um, different hotels like that then you will just see um the speaker saying something like um i think i would like to go for the Hilton hotel you might jump and pick it in the But if you continue to listen to the recording, down the line, the speaker might say something like, but on second thought, the 18 or 10 is a very expensive hotel. No, on second thought, I think I will go for Charity Hotel. So that will call listening for correction. I know I press for speed and time. Ahead. But if you listen carefully, what you picked originally, and choosing to be the correct answer. If you just listen a while longer, you might be able to correct yourself and say, no, 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 this is the wrong answer. Then you pick the correct answer. So that's what that. I'll put it all together. At least it's, it's quite a large. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, we are together. Yes, sir. All right. I mean, it's such a large class. So there won't be room for much interaction, much one on one. Yeah, but then I always want to ask a question. Um, are we with our papers and pen? Yes, 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 yes. Wow. yes, yes. That's, great. So. That's great. All right, so I didn't ask at the beginning of the class, I assume we've been jotting some things. Okay, that's fine. Like I said earlier, I have listening involves more of practice than giving you skills. 
to attempt question is more of practice practice correct yourself practice correct yourself repeat like i said unlike the other modules if it was reading if it was um writing we'll be discussing actual skills to tackle questions but for the IELTS listening you do not need so much skills what you need is tips you just need tips here and there so i'll just keep giving us the tips so one other tip i would like to give us at this point you might have heard of this before if you've heard of it i won't be shocked okay when you are okay some of your questions 40 questions right some of your questions will involve you writing out words on the other hand some of the questions will involve you choosing options a b c or d or e so two things involved some of the questions straight to the point you just choose your option a b c d why some of the questions you actually meant to spell out words so another way they can make it more technical is that they actually expect you to have correct spellings yeah this one might might pose a problem for us yes because of speed and all that we might not be able to get the spelling right all the time but there are some things we can do to help ourselves okay so one we should get accurate spellings all the time yes you are being tested for spelling if you miss one letter you go get one or two letters wrong you will miss that uh, question another thing is our tenses yes our tenses then our singular and plural yes a question that the answer needs um a singular say noun a singular noun if you go ahead to put a plural go if you add an s to it you will get it wrong on the other hand if the answer is actually plural and you go ahead to just put the singular noun there you will get it wrong so you have to listen attentively yeah where you have to add an s if it's a plural you should add it because if you add it you will miss that um question the another tip is this we all know that for what we call proper nouns proper nouns begin with capital letter then the rest of the letters can be in small letter yes proper nouns a proper noun for example is um john smith sarah becky rebecca names of people actual names of people names of persons those are proper nouns mm? names of countries names of towns name of cities those are proper nouns so they are meant to begin with capital letter and the rest of the letters will be i don't miss your cases so i can give you a special tip for this in my time when i read this what i did i got this tip very early it helped me when you are attempting this iot listening for the words you have to spell out avoid using small letter spell out all your words in capital letter i come again as far as i listening is concerned anything you want to spell spell it in block letters capital letters do not use lowercase yes do not use small letters do not use lowercase spell in upper cases throughout block letters capital letters so i hope we all got that so now we we help you not to make mistake of spelling proper nouns with the wrong cases or interchanging it where you're not meant to spell with capital letter you spell with capital so just spell everything capital letter so that one helps it helps and the thing is that usually you answer into your question on paper there usually will be some time at the end to transfer your answers into your answer sheets yeah the other tip is this instructions instructions four sections at the beginning of each section there's an instructor instruction at the beginning of the test there's an instruction 
But at the beginning of each section, there are specific instructions. Instructions like this, um, word count. Instruction could say something like, for this section, do not answer more than two words. Or you could say, for this section, do not answer more than one word. When an instruction says do not answer more than one word, something like boy is acceptable. But if you answer the boy, a boy, you get it wrong. They won't assume that you mean the same thing. So to get this right is instruction. They'll, before each recording starts playing, for each, but there are four sections, four recordings. Before each recording starts playing, there will be a short time for you to quickly read the instruction. There won't be enough time for you to even glance through the questions. So I know we're pressed for time, but we're rushing, we need to have speed, but do not fail to read your instructions. So that's one thing. We always read your instructions. Your instruction could say for this section, do not answer more than two words and one number. Two words and one number. So you actually have to follow your instructions. So that's that. So any other tip I wish to have where we need as we go ahead uh, along, I'll be dropping them. All right. So with how much I do, the the um what I refer to as the Bible of IELTS, which is the Cambridge series. So uh, at this point, I'd like for us to attempt some questions from the Cambridge series. Let's just practice and see our strengths. Uh, weaknesses we we'll correct ourselves practice again correct ourselves so i don't know if we have um this cambridge series i don't know but what i know is that we we are all on the whatsapp group so on the whatsapp group i'll just drop some pictures some questions then i'll play the recording for us here then we can attempt um um, the questions and uh, you've all you all you've all agreed that you are with your pen and you're with your paper so you just take this like as an a, a, a practice or even an exam mode and you just attempt the questions so you give me one minute i'll just pull up some questions
All right. So I've been able to drop um, some series of uh, photos on the WhatsApp group. So this contains question one to 40. That's one actual practice, um, actual listening test, a full listening test, four sections, 40 questions. You can just go through the uh, pictures, go through the questions in the first few minutes. You see at the top, you see part one, part two, part three, part four. You can just take the next few seconds, next few minutes to go through these questions. Then you focus on the part one. If we all if we all have our pen, our pen and our papers, uh, we can just go ahead to number one to forty. I'll just give us some few seconds. So in the next few seconds, just number number one to forty. Those of us that have um, the sample um, question uh, answer booklet, this is a good time to use the sample answer booklet. But if you don't have it and you don't know what I'm talking about, just take out a piece of paper and number one to 40. I'll just give us one minute for that. And after one minute, and I will assume we're on the same page, and I can go ahead to play a recording for the He's from Cambridge Words. From Cambridge Words, Cambridge number. Cambridge one, two, three, four. The question, your the sample question. Okay, it's from Cambridge series 17. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if we have 17. If we have it, fine. Yes, I have 17. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. For those of us that don't have the Cambridge Series 17, we could just as well just um, go to the WhatsApp group. I'll drop some pictures. Then you just follow. In the next few seconds, say 30 seconds, I'll start playing the recording. Then we can attempt. Sorry, 17 test one or two. And I believe that's text. I'm not so sure. I'm sorry, I'm not so sure. But and I don't think that's it. That, that's not a big issue right now. We, you could just use the pictures on the group instead of trying to find out the from your Cambridge. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not so sure. I think it's Cambridge 17, but I'm not so sure the particular test. Let me not mislead you. All right, so if we are together and we, we've numbered our um, booklet, in the next few seconds, I'll start playing the uh, recording, then we can start attempting it. Like I said, I asked listening is all about practice. There's no way I'll just come and start um, sharing skills and tips, sharing slides, pictures of what to do. It's all about practice. Like I'm, I'm, I'm aware many of us know by now. So if you guys are ready, you could just give me a wave. You could drop emojis, drop waves, raise your hand. You guys could raise your hands and I'll just see as much as I see people raising their hands, I'll know we're on the same page and I'll play the recording. I don't want to just rush. Okay. I'm seeing people raise their hand. Please, more people raise your hands. So I will not just assume and start playing when we're not. Okay. Please, I need more hands. All right. Nice. Please, more hands. Okay. All right, all right, great. Great. So in the next few seconds, we'll start hearing the recording. Um, I'll suggest we we'll just be in the place that's quiet. If you can use your earpiece or something, headsets, headphones. Yeah. So in the next few seconds, we'll start hearing the recording.
IELTS 17, published by Cambridge University Press and Assessment, 2022. This recording is copyright. Test 1. This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a woman called Jan phoning a man about their local conservation group. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello? Oh, hello. My name's Jan. Are you the right person to talk to about the Buckworth Conservation Group? Yes, I'm Peter. I'm the secretary. Good. I've just moved to this area and I'm interested in getting involved. I was in a similar group where I used to live. Could you tell me something about your activities, please? Of course. Well, we have a mixture of regular activities and special events. One of the regular ones is trying to keep the beach free of litter. A few of us spend a couple of hours a month on it. And it's awful how much there is to clear. I wish people would be more responsible and take it home with them. I totally agree. I'd be happy to help with that. Is it okay to take dogs? I'm afraid not, as they're banned from the beach itself. You can take them along the cliffs, though, and children are welcome. Right. We also manage a nature reserve, and there's a lot to do there all year round. For example, because it's a popular place to visit, we spend a lot of time looking after the paths and making sure they're in good condition for walking. I could certainly help with that. Good. And we have a program of creating new habitats there. We've just finished making and installing nesting boxes for birds to use. And next, we're going to work on encouraging insects. They're important for the biodiversity of the reserve. They certainly are. Oh, and we're also running a project to identify different species of butterflies that visit the reserve. You might be interested in taking part in that. Sure. I was involved in something similar where I used to live, counting all the species of moths. I'd enjoy that. Another job we're doing at the reserve is replacing the wall on the southern side, between the parking area and our woodshed. It was badly damaged in a storm last month. Okay. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Then, as I said, we have a programme of events as well, both at the weekend and during the week. Right. I presume you have guided walks. I'd like to get to know the local countryside as I'm new to the area. Yes, we do. The next walk is to Ruston Island a week on Saturday. We'll be meeting in the car park at Dunsmore Beach at low tide. That's when the sands are dry enough for us to walk to the island without getting wet. Sounds good. The island's a great place to explore. It's quite small and it's got a range of habitats. It's also an ideal location for seeing seals just off the coast or even on the beach. OK. And is there anything we should bring? Like a picnic, for instance? 
yes, do bring one, as it's a full day walk. And of course, it'll be wet walking across and back, so make sure your boots are waterproof. I must buy a new pair. There's a hole in one of my current ones. Well, I'd definitely like to come on the walk. Great. Then later this month, we're having a one-day woodwork session in Hopton Wood. I've never tried that before. Is it okay for beginners to take part? Definitely. There'll be a couple of experts leading the session, and we keep the number of participants down, so you'll get as much help as you need. Excellent. I'd love to be able to make chairs. <laughs> That's probably too ambitious for one day. So nothing, You'll be starting with wooden on spoons. Nothing and of course, screen. learning how to use the tools. Just and anything you make is yours to take home with you. That sounds like fun. When is it? It's on the 17th from 10 a.m. until 3. There's a charge of £35, including lunch, or £40 if you want to camp in the wood. I should think I'll come home the same day. Well, I'd certainly like to join the group. It sounds like you That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part one. <laughs> IELTS 17, published by Cambridge University Press and Assessment. Part 2. You will hear a tour guide, Lou Miller, speaking to a group of people about a boat trip they are going to take around the Australian island of Tasmania. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. So, hello everyone. My name's Lou Miller and I'm going to be your tour guide today as we take this fantastic boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. Before we set off, I just want to tell you a few things about our journey. Our boats aren't huge, as you can see. We already have three staff members on board. And on top of that, we can transport a further 15 people, that's you, around the coastline. But please note, if there are more than nine people on either side of the boat, we'll move some of you over. <laughs> Otherwise, all 18 of us will end up in the sea. We've recently upgraded all our boats. They used to be jet black, but our new ones now have these comfortable dark red seats and a light green exterior in order to stand out from others and help promote our company. This gives our boats a rather unique appearance, don't you think? We offer you a free lunchbox during the trip, and we have three types. Lunchbox 1 contains ham and tomato sandwiches. Lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll. And Lunchbox 3 is salad based and also contains eggs and tuna. All three lunchboxes also have a packet of crisps and chocolate bar inside. Please let staff know which lunchbox you prefer. I'm sure I don't have to ask you not to throw anything into the sea. We don't have any bins to put litter in, but Jess, myself or Ray, our other guide, will collect it from you after lunch and put it all in a large plastic sack. Before you hear the rest of the talk, 
you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise, so before we head off, let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors, as a number of shipwrecks have led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated, as some of the original drawings kept by the local council show. It sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot. In the 19th century, there were many jobs there, such as polishing the brass lamps, chopping firewood, and cleaning windows that kept lighthouse keepers busy. These workers were mainly prison convicts until the middle of that century, when ordinary families willing to live in such circumstances took over. Some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see. I know everyone loves the penguins, but they're very shy and unfortunately tend to hide from passing boats. But you might see birds in the distance, such as sea eagles, flying around the cliff edges where they nest. When we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals, we'll stop and watch them swimming around the coast. They're inquisitive creatures, so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. Their predators, orca whales, hunt along the coastline too, but spotting one of these is rare. Dolphins, on the other hand, can sometimes approach on their own or in groups as they ride the waves beside us. Lastly, I want to mention the caves. Tasmania is famous for its caves, and the ones we'll pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them. They can only be approached by sea, but if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you, then you can take a kayak into the area on another day, and one of our staff will give you more information on that. What we'll do is to go through a narrow channel past some incredible rock formations, and from there, we'll be able to see the openings to the caves, and at that point, we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part two. Part 3. You will hear two veterinary science students called Diana and Tim discussing their work placements and their course modules. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. 
So, Tim, we have to do a short summary of our work experience on a farm. Right. My farm was great, but arranging the work experience was hard. One problem was it was miles away and I don't drive. And also, I'd really wanted a placement for a month, but I could only get one for two weeks. Mm, I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm, so I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't easy. No, they don't seem to have websites, do they? I found mine through a friend of my mother's, but it wasn't easy. No. My farm was mostly livestock, especially sheep. I really enjoyed helping out with them. I was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb. On your own? No, the farmer was there, and he told me what to do. It wasn't a straightforward birth. But I managed. It was a great feeling to see the lamb stagger to its feet and start feeding almost straight away. And to know that it was okay. Mm. Then another time, a lamb had broken its leg. And they got the vet in to set it. And he talked me through what he was doing. That was really useful. Yes, my farm had sheep too. The farm was in a valley and they had a lowland breed called Suffolk. Although the farmer said they'd had other breeds in the past. So were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. They're quite big and solid. My farm was up in the hills, and they had a different breed of sheep. They were Cheviots. Oh, I heard their wool's really sought after. Yes, it's very hard wearing, and they use it for carpets. Right. I was interested in the amount of supplements they add to animals' feed nowadays. Like... Even the chickens got extra vitamins and electrolytes in their feed. Yes, I found that too. And they're not cheap. But my farmer said some are overpriced for what they are. And he didn't give them as a matter of routine, just at times when the chickens seemed to particularly require them. Yes, mine said the same. He said certain breeds of chickens might need more supplements than the others. But the cheap and expensive ones are all basically the same. Mm. So, did your farm have any other livestock, Diana? Yes, dairy cows. Oh, I made a really embarrassing mistake when I was working in the milk shed. Some cows had been treated with antibiotics, so their milk wasn't suitable for human consumption, and it had to be put in a separate container. But I got mixed up, and I poured some milk from the wrong cow in with the milk for humans. So the whole lot had to be thrown away. The farmer wasn't too happy with me. I asked my farmer how much he depended on the vet to deal with health problems. I'd read reports that the livestock's health is being affected, as farmers are under pressure to increase production. Well, he didn't agree with that. But he said that actually some of the stuff the vets do, like minor operations, he'd be quite capable of doing himself. Yeah, my farmer said the same, but he reckons vet skills are still needed. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now we've got to give a bit of feedback about last term's modules. Just short comments, apparently. Shall we do that now? OK. So, medical terminology. Well, my heart sank when I saw that, especially right at the beginning of the course. And I did struggle with it. I thought it would be hard. But actually, I found it all quite straightforward. What did you think about diet and nutrition? OK, I suppose. Do you remember what they told us about pet food and the fact that there's such limited checking into whether or not it's contaminated? I mean, in comparison with the checks on food for humans, I thought that was terrible. Mm. I think the module that really impressed me was the animal disease one when we looked at domesticated animals in different parts of the world, 
like camels and water buffalo and alpaca. The economies of so many countries depend on these, but scientists don't know much about the diseases that affect them. Yes. I thought they'd know a lot about ways of controlling and eradicating those diseases, but that's not the case at all. I loved the wildlife medication unit. Things like helping birds that have been caught in oil spills. That's something I hadn't thought about before. Yeah. I thought I might write my dissertation on something connected with that. Right. So, actually, I was thinking something along the same line. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part three. Part 4. You will hear an anthropology student giving a presentation on spiral path designs known as labyrinths. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Labyrinths have existed for well over 4,000 years. Labyrinths and labyrinthine symbols have been found in regions as diverse as modern-day Turkey, Ireland, Greece and India. There are various designs of labyrinth, but what they all have in common is a winding spiral path which leads to a central area. There is one starting point at the entrance, and the goal is to reach the central area. Finding your way through a labyrinth involves many twists and turns, but it's not possible to get lost, as there is only one single path. In modern times, the word labyrinth has taken on a different meaning, and is often used as a synonym for a maze. A maze is quite different as it is a kind of puzzle with an intricate network of paths. Mazes became fashionable in the 15th and 16th centuries in Europe and can still be found in the gardens of great houses and palaces. The paths are usually surrounded by thick, high hedges so that it's not possible to see over them. Entering a maze usually involves getting lost a few times before using logic to work out the pattern and find your way to the centre and then out again. There are lots of dead ends and paths which lead you back to where you started. The word maze is believed to come from a Scandinavian word for a state of confusion. This is where the word amazing comes from. Labyrinths, on the other hand, have a very different function. Although people now often refer to things they find complicated as labyrinths, this is not how they were seen in the past. The winding spiral of the labyrinth has been used for centuries as a metaphor for life's journey. It served as a spiritual reminder that there is purpose and meaning to our lives and helped to give people a sense of direction. Labyrinths are thought to encourage a feeling of calm and have been used as a meditation and prayer tool in many cultures over many centuries. The earliest examples of the labyrinth spiral pattern have been found carved into stone from Sardinia to Scandinavia, from Arizona to India to Africa. 
In Europe, these spiral carvings date from the late Bronze Age. The Native American Pima tribe wove baskets with a circular labyrinth design that depicted their own cosmology. In ancient Greece, the labyrinth spiral was used on coins around 4,000 years ago. Labyrinths made of mosaics were commonly found in bathhouses, villas and tombs throughout the Roman Empire. In Northern Europe, there were actual physical labyrinths designed for walking on. These were cut into the turf or grass, usually in a circular pattern. The origin of these walking labyrinths remains unclear, but they were probably used for fertility rites, which may date back thousands of years. Eleven examples of turf labyrinths survive today, including the largest one at Saffron Walden, England, which used to have a large tree in the middle of it. More recently, labyrinths have experienced something of a revival. Some believe that walking a labyrinth promotes healing and mindfulness, and there are those who believe in its emotional and physical benefits, which include slower breathing and a restored sense of balance and perspective. This idea has become so popular that labyrinths have been laid into the floors of spas, wellness centers, and even prisons in recent years. A pamphlet at Colorado Children's Hospital informs patients that walking a labyrinth can often calm people in the midst of a crisis. And apparently, it's not only patients who benefit. Many visitors find walking a labyrinth less stressful than sitting in a corridor or waiting room. Some doctors even walk the labyrinth during their breaks. In some hospitals, patients who can't walk can have a paper finger labyrinth brought to their bed. The science behind the theory is a little sketchy, but there are dozens of small-scale studies which support claims about the benefits of labyrinths. For example, one study found that walking a labyrinth provided short-term calming, relaxation and relief from anxiety for Alzheimer's patients. So what is it about labyrinths that makes their appeal so universal? That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. Wow. Hello, guys. Yes. <laughs> How's it? It oh, was just fine. Like, like, I think uh, yes. some persons uh, uh, muted themselves, so we couldn't hear very well. But then it was fine. Yes. Please say that again. Can you come again? Okay, I said at some point, some persons unmuted themselves. So it's okay. ten minutes of interrupted video. I'm so sorry. Um, as well, mm. but no, but it was not very audible. Mm. Like wasn't even very well. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was really fast to hear. Yeah, I was hearing very well, but Wait, I got lost. Just... Someone said it was very really fast. I swear it was. It was very fast at the time. I got lost. Oh, I got awesome. lost though. From 35 to 40, I did not write anything. Uh, <laughs> okay, please. I'm uh, sorry. The person that said it was very fast. Last part. I actually enjoyed the last part, but we were interrupted when some people unmuted themselves. So. That's very bad, but it's fine. It's fine. Well, please, I want to focus on the person that said it please, was very fast. Please, please. Answers. Yeah, of, How of can course. We of course. Can we, it? can we snap yeah. and send across? Yeah, just, 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 just hold on. In a few minutes, we'll resolve all that. Okay, but please, the person that said it was very fast. Please indicate. I'm the one, Jane. Okay, Jane. Okay, Jane. That's fine. Oh, is this the first time you're attempting the IELTS listing? Yes. Is this the first time? 
this is the first time I'm actually doing it with timer. Like I mm-hmm. usually play it until I hear everything before answering. Yeah. I thought ah. I was old. <laughs> my father, please. I thought that's oh, old. That's that is old. Old. It's, it's fine. So this this is actually the way to practice IS this thing. And if you say you should just play it as you like on your own time, that's not a good way to practice, though. No? So now, uh, Jane, you agree with me that it's actually it was actually good that you did it this way, on that time condition. So that's a a mighty great tip for IELTS listening. When you are practicing, you practice on that exam condition. Yes, you practice timed. So you don't just practice on your own. You practice timed. Is you is discipline. Then you score yourself. And anything you miss, you score yourself. You get your actual score. From there, you can know where to improve. Okay, that's fine, Jane. So someone else okay. asked, well, how do you get the question? How do we submit? Um, I would say you just I can call them out now. Then you yes. call yourself. Yes. Please okay. call them out. Please, Hello? Sorry, please. 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 Thank you. I have a question for the yes. answer. Now let's call myself. Yeah. Hold please. on. Please. 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 Correct the correct spellings of the answer. You can actually post it. Please, yeah. can you put on a group the WhatsApp group page? Can you send the answers to the WhatsApp yeah. group page so yeah. that we can mark so and you then all, we can you all are take correct. correction from them? You all are correct. Uh, so please, can you guys unmute uh, your mic now? So let's move forward. Thank you for Sorry. your feedback. Okay, I'll pull out the question before I before Okay, you read, uh, please. Uh, at the I think that should be is it multiple choice where we have to pick a uh, question 17 to 18, okay. where we have to pick two options. I want to know before calling out the answers if let's say B is coming, my C is coming before B. Or my because uh, 17 and 18. Let me just use my example. I have B. 17, 18C. But if I'm writing it the other way, maybe C is coming before B. Should I mark myself wrong? What? Okay, okay, okay. Um, thanks for um, uh, Koyono. Or yes, Koyono. Okay, okay. No. Koyono. All right. Thanks for your question. That was a very, very valid question. Um, so to answer your question, and to answer, you can mute yourself now. To answer mm-hmm. your question, to answer everyone's question, I'm going to go ahead to post the answer on the WhatsApp group now then you can score yourself. Then you can type your score if you want into the chat box. It's just for us to know. For Koyano, when, when, when I post the answers, you see by yourself the answer to that your question. Um, it's quite straightforward. So if you can give me one minute, I'll go ahead to post the question, the answers now. All right, guys, so I just posted the answers to the questions. Um, let's take the next few minutes to score ourselves. And please, let's be strict when scoring ourselves. So then, Koyono, I believe if you go through the questions now, the answer, you see the answer to your question. Let me just say it here. Um, for those particular questions you asked, it doesn't matter the order which, in which you answer it. It doesn't matter. Does it for the question 17, 18, we're talking about either option can come first. It doesn't matter. 
if you go through the question, the answer that I just posted, there, you'll see it now. I could as well go ahead to share it here in case for one reason or the other you don't have access to your WhatsApp. All right, I just shared the picture here. So it's on WhatsApp group and it's on this um, platform as well. So these are the answers to the questions. Let's take the next few minutes to quickly score ourselves. If we finish scoring ourselves, you'll get an idea of how well you did. Yeah. So let's just take the next few minutes to score ourselves. After that, then we can unmute ourselves and have a quick chat and resolve some of the issues on grant or that will later come up. Get some clarifications and all that. Ask your questions and get answer to your questions. I have 24. <laughs> I have 24 over 40. That's fine. Um, who's speaking? Edward. Okay. Edward, you can meet your mic. Sure. Okay. Is this um have you attempted this IS listening before? Truthfully. Yes, I have. Yes. Okay. So you are familiar with the Cambridge series? Mm, I'm getting used to it. Little by little anyway. It's fine, it's fine. So uh I, I believe you will agree with me that you need more practice. Exactly. Yes, you need more practice. 24, 24 is low. Let me not give you false hope. 24 is low. Although the audio wasn't as clear as what I yes. used to do on my yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So you could do better. So typically, what do you get uh, before now? What do you get? Most times I do get 32, 31, 35. That's manageable. Like, I use the word manageable. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Sometimes when the passages are hard, um, you get 28. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So let's just give the others a few more minutes or seconds to score themselves. Okay, who's raising Hello. their hand? Hello. Yeah. I scored 32. Wow. That's, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I think that's a 7.0 if I'm not mistaken. 32 is a, is a 7.0. So use that as a guide. Is this your first attempt? No, no, no. Oh, so what were your previous calls before now? And um, between the ranges of 30 to 34. Oh, Sometimes okay. I scored 30 to yeah. 1. It depends. So you're in your normal range. But I believe you can do better. Okay. Yeah. Though I made some spelling mistakes. Like when they, when the audio was saying boot, it was pluralized. So oh. I write B O O T instead of adding S. Then it's fine. It's someone fine. was distracting us during that number nine question. Yeah, let me apologize on that person. And see the, yeah. the multiple, the multiple choice too. Okay. And the don't question 16 and 17. I missed out the two questions. Oh, okay. It's fine. But I guess during the later part, the part four um, question, I okay. guess I I didn't hear what the uh, recording was saying in my question 38 and 34, but I guess it's right. When 38 was I write and read in and take nine. No, it, it was a guess, and I guess right. Yeah, that's fine. That's yes, fine. and nine. Reading and tape. That's fine. Any more responses? Any more queries? Yes. yes. My okay. name is Lynn. Who is it? Okay, Please, go ahead. I have on that option, um, question 10. The answer is 35, and I saw you wrote 35 both in figures and in number. Okay. Do we still, any figures, do we 
write in words and in figures as well. Okay. You, what did you, what did you choose in your own? I wrote just three five, thirty five, thirty five. 35. 35. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So both are actually correct. Okay. Yes. But please, correct. someone had a question I wanted to ask. In that number seven that has but, to do with boots. But sir, there also... is pounds in front of the thirty five. It doesn't matter. They don't mark for figure for those pounds. It doesn't matter. If you add okay. it, it's fine. Yes, if you add it, it's fine. If you don't add it, it's fine. And Sorry, also, are you talking? I mean the E O O T. I I, I wrote E O O T. That's I didn't wrong. add the S. No, that's wrong. You got it wrong. Ew. Take note of your singulars and plural. We talked about it earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The person that asked about pound sign, if you write it, you are correct. If you don't write it, it's fine. Then also, if you spell but your, I think, your if you but spell I think the part of the question, the like, passage, so you shouldn't write it. It's, carry, okay, it's in the, the passage. Question. Yeah, it's for the pounds. The this thing is already G A G. Yes, yes. Yes. It's fine if you add it. It's fine if you don't add it. It's perfect. And also, you can sp it has spelled the num uh, the numbers or write it in actual numerals. Mm -hmm. You can write the numerals. You can spell the numbers. They are both correct. Any more query? Uh, this point, we've answered many of your questions, except there are still some very interesting questions you guys want us to tackle. Yes, yeah, really so sorry. Okay, continue. Hello. Yeah. I want to, this is number seven, sorry. Um, maybe for example, number six, the answer is island. I wrote because this is my first attempt to as well. Fine, um fine. work. I, I actually copied, I wrote like two, like three words. Like for example, for that six, my own was walk to highland. So in that case, we that be a correct, like we didn't mark. No, no, no. What does you have to read the instructions? It was just one word only. So if yeah, you write you anything the outside one word. Yeah, you have to read the instructions. For okay. each section, make sure you follow the instructions. If the instructions okay. say you can write two words, fine. The instructions say you can write okay. two words and a number, fine. But don't write three words when instruction is saying write one word or write All two. Right. So follow the instruction, okay. yeah. Then the from number 36, I wrote coins. Instead of me, it was coins. C-O-N-E-X. So that means I have to be walked through. That, that's a spelling speed. error. Yes. Okay, that, that's <laughs> Thank wrong. you. It's a spelling error. Thank you. You have to be true right. to where you are marking yourself. So what did you score in all? I'm you put in coons. <laughs> what did you score in all? In total? I, I did not try at all. No, share no, share no. with us. What did you score? Actually, I attempted just 19. Why? And I got 10. Because I did not, I was distracted. So I just had to, I left it and I did not. This is my first time. So, okay, it's fine. It's like, fine. Let's, let's push on. Let's push on. It's your first time. That's, that's, that's acceptable. Let's push on. Mm? As, as they say, as the odds. So we'll, we'll, take a, we'll take a poll, like a vote. If you guys are okay with it, we can push on and attempt another one. Especially for yes. the, the guys. Hello, please. Before we proceed, I have a question. Okay. Please, can you give tips that we can use to identify this single and plural right? Like in case of the question seven, like the case of the question seven. Yeah. Uh, I learned there should be a particular word before boots that will help us to identify that. Right? Okay. I'm going to pluralize it. Or I'll write it in single form. That would be difficult to say. That would be difficult. But typically, you will be able to pick it from the from what they say. That but it was not realized when the recording was going on. Like it, it, it actually said, "But make sure you come with your boots." Okay, you know what? Yeah, you know what? It's you know what? It's For this particular, uh -huh. okay, this particular. Question seven. It's just seems to, okay. Some people say it's plural, right? Some people say it's not plural, right? It seems to be controversial. 
So on this question seven, I will get back to Ross on this. I'll have to take a closer look and I'll give my opinion on it. It seems to be controversial. Some people feel it was polarized. Some people feel it shouldn't be polarized. Okay, it's fine. So with you guys' permission, we can push on and attempt another one. Especially for those who are saying it's their first attempt. They are mesmerized. So we'll take a poll. You guys can wave. Please raise a hand if you want us to attempt a second. Listening is very short now. Listening, listening is very short. 30, 30 minutes, you are done with listening. So if you want us to go with another attempt, with another a different question, please raise your hand. I'm seeing five hands raised. Please. Okay. Is it, okay, I'm seeing more hands. Please keep raising your hands if you want us to attempt a second one. Okay, more hands. Please, more hands. Let's know. If there's still time for us to take a second one. Okay, more and more people are raising their hands. That's fine. It seems the majority of us wants us to keep going. That's fine. So in the next few minutes, I'll drop the questions on the WhatsApp group. Then we can move on. That's fine. Okay, somebody have um, uh, muted me, Abi. I don't know. I can't hear you again. Hello. Nobody, nobody muted you. All right. So I just dropped the questions on the WhatsApp group. So you can take the next few minutes, or rather, next few seconds, to go through the questions. 
in a few sec i'll give us one minute then i'll start playing the recording is that fine all right guys i want to get up please for together please let me see a show of hands yes all right all right all right guys we can mute our mics okay okay please keep raising your hands there's no work together I can please see. sorry i'm trying to arrange this stuff on my whatsapp it, it appears to be scattered okay use the next few seconds to do that when you are done please raise your hands i'm seeing about 16 20 hands or 16 18 hands raised please we need more show of hands to know that we're together so we can push on within the next one or two minutes we all should be ready to start the and um, please let me beg let me beg you please let's um let's keep our mics muted okay. so we can all oh. hear please let's keep our mics muted in the next few seconds you start hearing the recording All right, in a GP, you start hearing the recording for the second test. Test two. This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a man asking about voluntary work in the village that he has just moved to. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Hello, Jane Fairbanks speaking. Oh, good morning. My name's Frank Pritchard. I've just retired and moved to Southo. I'd like to become a volunteer. And I gather you coordinate voluntary work in the village? That's right. What sort of thing could I do? Well, we need help with the village library. We borrow books from the town library, and individuals also donate them. So, one thing you could do is get involved in collecting them, if you've got a car, that is. Yes, that's no problem. The times are pretty flexible, so we can arrange it to suit you. Oh, another thing is the records that we keep of the books we're given, and those we borrow and need to return to the town library. It would be very useful to have another person to help keep them up to date. Right. I'm used to working on a computer. I presume they're computerised? Oh, yes. Is the library purpose-built? I haven't noticed it when I've walked around the village. No. We simply have the use of a room in the village hall. The West Room. It's on the left as you go in. 
Well, I must go and have a look inside the hall. Yes, it's a nice building. Do you run a lunch club in the village for elderly people? I know a lot of places do. Yes, we have a very successful club. I could help with transport, if that's of any use. Oh, definitely. People come to the club from neighbouring villages, and we're always in need of more drivers. And does the club have groups that focus on a particular hobby, too? I could get involved in one or two, particularly if there are any art groups. Excellent. I'll find out where we need help and get back to you. Fine. What about help for individual residents? Do you arrange that at all? Yes, we do it as a one-off. Oh, in fact, there's Mrs Carroll. She needs a lift to the hospital next week, and we're struggling to find someone. When's her appointment? On Tuesday. It would take the whole morning. I could do that. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. And also next week, we're arranging to have some work done to Mr Selsbury's house before he moves, as he isn't healthy enough to do it himself. We've got some people to decorate his kitchen, but if you could do some weeding in his garden, that would be wonderful. OK, I'd enjoy that. And presumably the day and time are flexible. Oh, yes. Just say when would suit you best, and we'll let Mr. Salisbury know. Good. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. The Volunteers Group also organises monthly social events, which is a great way to meet other people, of course. Uh -huh. So next month, on the 19th of October, we're holding a quiz. A couple of residents are great at planning unusual ones, and we always fill the village hall. That sounds like fun. Can I do anything to help? Well, because of the number of people, we need plenty of refreshments for halfway through. So if you could provide any, we'd be grateful. I'm sure I could. I'll think about what to make and let you know. Thank you. Then on November the 18th, we're holding a dance, also in the village hall. We've booked a band that specialises in music of the 1930s. They've been before, and we've had a lot of requests to bring them back. I'm not really a dancer, but I'd like to do something to help. Well, we sell tickets in advance, and having an extra person to check them at the door as people arrive would be good. It can be quite a bottleneck if everyone arrives at once. OK, I'm happy with that. We're also arranging a New Year's Eve party. We're expecting that to be a really big event. So instead of the village hall, it'll be held in the Mountfort Hotel. The Mountfort. M-O-U-N-T-F-O-R-T Hotel. It isn't in Southo itself, but it's only a couple of miles away. The hotel will be providing dinner, and we've booked a band. The one thing we haven't got yet is a poster. That isn't something you could do by any chance, is it? Well, actually, yes. Before I retired, I was a graphic designer, so that's right up my street. Oh, perfect. I'll give you the details, and then perhaps you could send me a draft? Of course. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part one.
Part 2. You will hear a guide at a tourist attraction called Oniton Hall talking to a group of visitors. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Good morning and welcome to Oniton Hall, one of the largest estates in the area. My name's Nick and I'm one of the guides. I'll give you a brief introduction to the estate while you're sitting down and then we'll walk round. The estate consists of the house, gardens, parkland and farm, and it dates back to the 14th century. The original house was replaced in the late 17th century, and of course it has had a large number of owners. Almost all of them have left their mark, generally by adding new rooms, like the ballroom and conservatory, or by demolishing others. The farm looks much as it's always done, although the current owner has done a great deal of work to the flower beds. In the 17th century, the estate was owned by a very wealthy man called Sir Edward Downs. His intention was to escape from the world of politics after years as an active politician and to build a new house worthy of his big collection of books, paintings and sculptures. He broke off contact with his former political allies and hosted meetings of creative and literary people, like painters and poets. Unusually for his time, he didn't care whether his guests were rich or poor, as long as they had talent. Big houses like Oniton had dozens of servants until the 1920s or 30s, and we've tried to show what their working lives were like. Photographs, of course, don't give much of an idea. So instead, as you go round the house, you'll see volunteers dressed up as 19th century servants going about their work. They'll explain what they're doing and tell you their recipes or what tools they're using. We've just introduced this feature to replace the audio guide we used to have available. I see there are a number of children here with you today. Well, we have several activities, especially for children, like dressing up in the sorts of clothes that children wore in the past. And, as it's a fine day, some of you will probably want to play in the Adventure Playground. Our latest addition is child-sized tractors that you can drive around the grounds. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. We'll also be going into the farm that's part of the estate, where there's plenty to do. Most of the buildings date from the 18th century, so you can really step back into an agricultural past. Until recently, 
The dairy was where milk from the cows was turned into cheese. It's now the place to go for lunch, or afternoon tea, or just a cup of coffee and a slice of homemade cake. The big stone building that dominates the farm is the large barn. And in here is our collection of agricultural tools. These were used in the past to plough the earth, sow seeds, make gates and much more. There's a small barn, also made of stone, where you can groom the donkeys and horses to keep their coats clean. They really seem to enjoy having it done, and children love grooming them. The horses no longer live in the stables, which instead is the place to go to buy gifts, books, our own jams and pickles, and clothes and blankets made of wool from our sheep. Outside the shed, which is the only brick building, you can climb into a horse-drawn carriage for a lovely, relaxing tour of the park and farm. The carriages are well over a hundred years old. And finally, the parkland, which was laid out in the 18th century with a lake and trees that are now well established. You'll see types of cattle and sheep that are hardly ever found on farms these days. We're helping to preserve them, to stop their numbers falling further. OK, well, if you'd like to come with me, we will start. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part two. Part 3. You will hear two theatre studies students discussing stage and screen performances of Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 and 22. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 and 22. Did you make notes while you were watching the performances of Romeo and Juliet, Gemma? Yes, I did. I found it quite hard, though. I kept getting too involved in the play. Me too. I ended up not taking notes. I wrote down my impressions when I got home. Do you mind if I check a few things with you, in case I've missed anything? And I've also got some questions about our assignment. No, it's good to talk things through. I may have missed things too. OK, great. So, first of all, I'm not sure how much information we should include in our reviews. Right. Well, I don't think we need to describe what happens, especially as Romeo and Juliet is one of Shakespeare's most well-known plays. Yeah, everyone knows the story. In an essay, we'd focus on the poetry and Shakespeare's use of imagery, etc. But that isn't really relevant in a review. We're supposed to focus on how effective this particular production is. Hmm. We should say what made it a success or a failure. And part of that means talking about the emotional impact the performance had on us. I think that's important. Yes. And we should definitely mention how well the director handled important bits of the play. Like when Romeo climbs onto Juliet's balcony. And the fight between Mercutio and Tybalt. Yes. It would also be interesting to mention the theatre space and how the director used it, but I don't think we'll have space in 800 words. No, OK. That all sounds quite straightforward. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 23 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 23 to 30. So, what about the Emporium Theatre's production of the play? I thought some things worked really well, but there were some problems too. Yeah. Well, what about the set, for example? I think it was visually really stunning. I'd say that was probably the most memorable thing about this production. You're right. The set design was really amazing. But actually, I have seen similar ideas used in other productions. Mm. What about the lighting? Some of the scenes were so dimly lit, it was quite hard to see. I didn't dislike it. It helped to change the mood of the quieter scenes. That's a good point. What did you think of the costumes? I was a bit surprised by the contemporary dress, I must say. Yeah, I think it worked well, but I'd assumed it would be more conventional. Me too. I liked the music at the beginning, and I thought the musicians were brilliant. But I thought they were wasted because the music didn't have much impact in Acts 2 and 3. Yes, that was a shame. One problem with this production was that the actors didn't deliver the lines that well. They were speaking too fast. It was a problem, I agree. But I thought it was because they weren't speaking loudly enough, especially at key points in the play. I actually didn't have a problem with that. It's been an interesting experience watching different versions of Romeo and Juliet, hasn't it? Definitely. It's made me realise how relevant the play still is. Right. I mean, a lot's changed since Shakespeare's time, but in many ways, nothing's changed. There are always disagreements and tension between teenagers and their parents. Yes, that's something all young people can relate to. More than the violence and the extreme emotions in the play. How did you find watching it in translation? Really interesting. I expected to find it more challenging, but I could follow the story pretty well. I stopped worrying about not being able to understand all the words and focused on the actors' expressions. The ending was pretty powerful. Yes, that somehow intensified the emotion for me. Did you know Shakespeare's been translated into more languages than any other writer? Hmm. What's the reason for his international appeal, do you think? I was reading that it's because his plays are about basic themes that people everywhere are familiar with. Yeah, and they can also be understood on different levels. The characters have such depth. Right, which allows directors to experiment and find new angles. That's really important. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part three. Part three, you part four, you will hear a lecturer on a languages course talking about the impact of digital technology on Icelandic, the native language of Iceland. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Right, everyone. Let's make a start. Over the past few sessions, we've been considering the reasons why some world languages are in decline. 
And today I'm going to introduce another factor that affects languages and the speakers of those languages, and that's technology, and in particular, digital technology. In order to illustrate its effect, I'm going to focus on the Icelandic language, which is spoken by around 321,000 people, most of whom live in Iceland, an island in the North Atlantic Ocean. The problem for this language is not the number of speakers, even though this number is small, nor is it about losing words to other languages, such as English. In fact, the vocabulary of Icelandic is continually increasing, because when speakers need a new word for something, they tend to create one, rather than borrowing from another language. All this makes Icelandic quite a special language. It's changed very little in the past millennium, yet it can handle 21st century concepts related to the use of computers and digital technology. Take, for example, the word for web browser. This is vafri in Icelandic, which comes from the verb to wander. I can't think of a more appropriate term because that's exactly what you do mentally when you browse the internet. Then there's an Icelandic word for podcast, which is too hard to pronounce, and so on. Icelandic, then, is alive and growing, but, and it's a big but, young Icelanders spend a great deal of time in the digital world, and this world is predominantly English. Think about smartphones. They didn't even exist until comparatively recently, but today young people use them all the time to read books, watch TV or films, play games, listen to music and so on. Obviously, this is a good thing in many respects because it promotes their bilingual skills. But the extent of the influence of English in the virtual world is staggering and it's all happening really fast. For their parents and grandparents, the change is less concerning because they already have their native speaker skills in Icelandic. But for young speakers, well, the outcome is a little troubling. For example, teachers have found that playground conversations in Icelandic secondary schools can be conducted entirely in English, while teachers of much younger children have reported situations where their classes find it easier to say what is in a picture using English rather than Icelandic. The very real and worrying consequence of all this is that the young generation in Iceland is at risk of losing its mother tongue. Of course, this is happening to other European languages too. But while internet companies might be willing to offer, say, French options in their systems, it's much harder for them to justify the expense of doing the same for a language that has a population the size of a French town, such as Nice. The other drawback of Icelandic is the grammar, which is significantly more complex than in most languages. At the moment, the tech giants are simply not interested in tackling this. So, what is the Icelandic government doing about this? Well, large sums of money are being allocated to a language technology fund that it is hoped will lead to the development of Icelandic sourced apps and other social media and digital systems. But clearly this is going to be an uphill struggle. On the positive side, they know that Icelandic is still the official language of education and government. It has survived for well over a thousand years and the experts predict that its future in this nation state is sound and will continue to be so. However, there's no doubt that it's becoming an inevitable second choice in young people's lives. This raises important questions. When you consider how much of the past is tied up in a language, will young Icelanders lose their sense of their own identity? Another issue that concerns the government of Iceland is this. If children are learning two languages through different routes, neither of which they are fully fluent in, will they be able to express themselves properly? That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four.
Hello, guys. Yeah. Hello. How was this one? How was the second attempt? It's okay. Um, Let's all go to break, you know, at some point. Sorry, I didn't get everything. Okay, okay. I got close as a at four. I got close to tally. In the IELTS test, you would now have ten minutes. All right, please more responses, more responses. They didn't follow up from one to ten. Why? I didn't get it. I was locked out of the meeting. Oh, I'm so sorry for that. Please more responses. Please, the answer. Yeah, we'll get the answer shortly. We'll get the answer. Yeah, he got it. Please, is this one? Is this one still um, Cambridge 17? Of course, it's Cambridge 17. Yeah. Cambridge 17. Okay. Thank One you. thing I noticed myself is that once you've lost the number you are in, it's really very difficult to get back to where that is. Exactly. Yes, just continue. So you have, to, about it. Just you have continue. to find a way to the to the next question they're actually talking exactly. about. Exactly. And sometimes by the time you find a way, you have missed some number. Yes. You yeah, that's right. You guys are yeah. right. That's a challenge, actually. That's why you need your full attention. You don't need to be distracted. Exactly. Ah. But, but one thing you should know, when you miss a particular number, or you know you miss two numbers for that matter, the most important thing to you then will be how to find yourself. And just to find the next number that you're in. Don't, yes. Yeah, yes. Don't worry about the number you've missed. Anyway. After all, we've said that if you can get 30 out of 40 questions, you've gotten a 7. Although, you should not be aiming for a 7. But then, on exam day, if you miss a particular number or series of numbers, don't be too bothered. Just try and find your, your footing immediately. Uh, I'll send the answers in a jiffy. Give me one minute. Okay. Yeah. See, see one word. Please. All right, guys, we can go ahead to score ourselves. Hey. <laughs> I can hear some um, willings. Mm -hmm. I've, sh I've shared the answers on WhatsApp group as well as on this platform. Let's take the next sure. few seconds, few minutes to score okay. ourselves. And let's be strict to when scoring ourselves. Let's be strict. Yeah. Yeah. Speed seven day garden. Okay. It's seven. It's nine dance. A ticket. Then graphic. Money poster. Please mute yourself, oh, please. Ah.
All right, guys, I'm seeing some hands raised. Are we done? I believe we're done yeah. right now. All right, all right, all right, all right. So I need your feedback. You guys can unmute your mics now. So uh, and this um, well, I missed a lot of questions. <laughs> Mm -hmm. what did you get? Jesus Christ. What did you get? So, you know, I My didn't score didn't get courage at all. I'm going to distract me. She's pressing good score. I don't score more than 30. I mean, no, just, I just, I just, I just, what did you guys score now? Marvin, I scored 32, still 32, same 32. Oh, wow, nice. But both my part one and two, I scored 10, 10 in the first um, part. Nice. And not too bad, not too bad. The third part, I scored um, six out of 10. But I missed out some question in the last part, which is the part four, from question 34 to... 37. Oh, so sorry about that. So ask about question 31. This is one word and a number. I write 3, 2, 1, and 1,000 in words. Am I correct? In words? <laughs> yes. Three, two, and... No, this is one word and a number. Okay. Do you understand? The, the instruction... Is one word and the number. Okay. So I write three two one, as in in figure three two one in figure, and thousand in word. Instead of writing three two one, comma oh. zero zero zero. <laughs> there was no need for that. There was no need for that. Okay, I'm wrong. Yes, yes. You write everything in just write it. Use just choose one style. Write everything in figure, in numerals. And that was wrong. Eh? That, that one will be more than if I want to write in words, it will be but more just, than just write it in numerals, in figures, numerals. In numerals. Yes. Figures. Okay, yes. Okay, okay. yes. Numerals. I, Three, two, I, one, zero, zero, zero. I, yeah. There's no that it doesn't make sense to break it like that. It's fine. There's more responses. What did you guys get? I so got I, <laughs> I I attempted only thirty four questions Why? and I was distracted. My okay. children, it's fine. I got stuck. Um, I got stuck in. I didn't answer from thirty five downwards, but I knew I had it been I answered all of them, I would have scored more than thirty. Right, so what did you get now? Uh, I answered thirty four questions and I got twenty four. That's fine. That's fine. Nice attempt. A more response. I got 20 over 40. Is this Jane? Yes. So this is your second attempt now? <laughs> yes. So are you improving or are you going backwards? I don't know. I, yeah, I, I think the first one was more higher. I got 24 in the first one. Yeah, that's what you one. said. Yeah, yeah. And now I got 20 this time. So, what do you th so you think you need more practice, right? Yeah. Okay. You'll be the best judge of yourself. If you need more, you need more intensive classes. You, need, you know, you need more practice. It's up to you. Well, you'll be the best judge. All right, more responses. I missed. I, I missed for two I, questions. The network was just breaking. So, so you got I got, I got, I got just, I got nineteen. Oh wow! I missed fourteen questions uh, because of network was breaking. Oh, like, so sorry about that. So sorry. So I pray the first one we took than this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. More responsibility. Uh, it's the first one I got 30 now. It's... Oh, so you dropped. I it's understandable, it's because of network. It's fine. It's fine. Um more response. I got I got I got 36. 36. And my mistake. Yes. Question two. I wrote record instead of records. Oh, that, and then that. mm -hmm. another thing that helped me, the fourth part, I got lost after writing out smartphones. I think I got lost, but what I did was while I was listening, I was hearing some, I heard was like a bilingual. So I know I was lost. So I was looking for where I was. I was just jotting, writing some things down. And then 
when I finished, I quickly read the sentence, and amongst those things I jotted, I was like, okay, I think this one should fit in here. This one should fit in here. <laughs> and luckily for me, I got it. That was smart, actually. So what did you get in total? 36 over 40. I think this is the highest now, right? This is Koyono. The last one, what did you get? Yes. The last one. <laughs> the last one, I got 38. Oh, wow. Nice one. Nice one. So have you been yeah. practicing before now? Yes, I have. No My only that. challenge is writing and speaking. But I think I'm trying and listening. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so I think uh, you, you can serve as inspiration to the rest of us. That with more practice, we will become better at this listening. This is, this is not an issue. You're not saying that you have some challenges with writing. It's understandable. Everyone does. But for listening, listening is not a challenge. With constant practice, we can master listening. Mm? So Koyano will serve as our inspiration tonight. Um, we've, tried, we've tried for tonight. We've, we've gone a long way. We've, we've done two tests, two separate tests. I think we've, 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 we've done a lot this night. Uh, in a few minutes, the class will be coming to an end. Um, any more queries, any more issues? Please, guys, speak up. Any more concerns, queries, issues before the class comes to an end? At, at this point, we can see we've had a successful class. We'll pick up from where we stopped today and we'll improve on it. Any more queries? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, in the beginning, I said there was one particular test where the answer was supposed to be a question. Um, but where I had question, and the answer only was the worst. And that is there was another number five at group. I wrote at group, whereas the answer was supposed to be. I can't hear you clearly. I'm so sorry. Please, can you speak up? I'm sorry. I said in number three and number five. Like number three and number five. Okay. Yes. The answer you sent, number three was west. Number five was art. Okay. Then when I was listening, what I heard in number three was west room, while number five was art group. So I, I just wrote. West room. I put hyphen in between West okay. and house. Then the and second one. Art groups. Where well, the answer was art. You just put hyphen in this one. Yes, hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So what does what does, what what did the instructions say? One word. That was our. Word. Yes, one word. So um. Putting knife pin was actually smart, uh, but it didn't work in this case. Putting knife pin was smart, but in this case, it didn't work. On that normal scenario, knife pins do work, but not in all cases. When you put knife in between words, you can make it sort of collapse, so to speak, and become one word. But it didn't work in this case. West room, then, the knife pin didn't work there. Same, same thing as ad group. I think has no place in those two phrases um so that was math using i things but not in these cases all right all right thanks guys um we've come to the end of tonight's class thanks guys for joining us i appreciate you all if no thanks. more queries oh, thank you so much it's thank fine you. If no thank more, you. it's fine it's fine so if no more queries we've come to the end of tonight's class see you guys have a good night rest. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Thank okay. you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Let's practice more. Yeah. Hello. Good evening.